for another coffee with Kilroy, or what I mostly call beverage in a book. My beverage, coffee. Wow, I'm running out of it here. Ah, and today's book is a book I've been to time and time again, and I'll probably keep going back to at least maybe 365 times or 366. I can't figure out. Uh, I have to go back and check and see if we got uh, leap year in here. But this is Tales of War, great stories from military history for every day of the year. And today is October 14th. Can we figure out what we're talking about here today? Maybe, possibly. I'll let you uh, think on that while I have another sip and get to our reading assignment today. So crack open your uh, books to 14th of October and see what we have for us today. Rommel, the desert fox, is forced to commit suicide. 1944. In the old photographs, we see him in a weathered leather field coat, sp sp sporting goggles on the brim of his hat, battered officer's cap Nazi Germany must Nazi Germany's most coveted medal the iron cross hangs from a ribbon around his neck he is field marshal Erwin Rommel who today was forced to take his own life wow that's quite a setup right there we're getting right into it here uh, Rommel was born in 1891, son of a schoolmaster. He chose a military career, and at the age of 20, he uh, fresh out of cadet school, he joined the infantry regiment. After war broke out in 1914, his regiment fought in France, Romania, and Italy. He won his first Iron Cross in, in September 1914 when he was wounded in France and another in 1915. But his highest medal of the war was for action in Italy, where he won the um, informally known as the Blue Max, the Blauer Max, the Blue Max. Then the highest award for gallantry in action given by the Imperial German Army. After the First World War, Rommel remained in the military, just another infantry officer in a defeated army. It was only in 1933, with the rise of Adolf Hitler, that his star began to rise. In 1937, he published uh, Infantry uh, Greift an, The Infantry Attacks, a military textbook based on his combat experience and came to be considered a superior military thinker. Hitler was impressed and made him commander of his bodyguard. At the outbreak of the Second World War, Rommel, by this time a major general, was commander of Hitler's field headquarters during uh, the invasion of Poland. From this special vantage point in the fast-moving campaign in which he accompanied Hitler both in the field and at conferences, he grasped the potential that tanks offered to the German attacker. Even though his experience was in infantry, he now asked for an armored division and with Hitler's intervention smoothing the way, received command of the 7th Panzer Division in time for the invasion of the Low Countries and France. Once France had been subdued, Rommel was sent to North Africa as commander of the Africa Corps. There he gained fame in his brilliant tank attacks across wide expanse of open desert, earning him the nickname used by both Germans and Allies, the Desert Fox. Rommel used speed and surprised out with the British, d driving them 600 miles back into Libya. He was also a master at deception, once having brooms and rags tied to the backs of his tanks to raise clouds of desert dust, making the enemy believe he had superior numbers. In June 1942, he reached his greatest success with the capture of Tobruk. In October 1942, however, superior British numbers and firepower, plus the careful planning of the British Field Marshal Montgomery, defeated the Germans' force at El Alamein. See November 5th, 4th of November. Ooh, I got something. I got some homework to do. On learning uh, of the Africa Corps' imminent defeat, Hitler ordered uh, its commander to hold to the last man, but knowing the cause was hopeless, Rommel ignored the order. The British captured 230,000 Germans and Italians. Returning to Germany, Rommel was still a national hero. His next assignment was to defend Normandy against Allied invasion. He wanted a mobile defense with 1,500 tanks positioned behind the beaches, 
but he was overruled in his uh, disposition, and the result was just what he feared. The landings were not met with sufficient German strength to stop the attackers on the shore and drive them back into the sea. On 4 June 1944, he went uh, on leave to celebrate his wife, Lucy's 50th birthday. Two days later, the Allies landed in Normandy, hurrying back to the front. He was wounded when an RAF fighter strafed his staff car. The injured field marshal was sent home to convalesce. The following month, Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg led a group of senior officers in an attempt to assassinate Hitler, but the bomb placed at Hitler's headquarters succeeded only in wounding... There we go. Wounding the dictator... Uh, see 20th of July. Oh, I got something to do there too. Actually, and I've covered um, the uh, uh, Black Orchestra. It's a game. I'll put a link to it, which talks about all the different attempts on Hitler, and you get to try it yourself. Uh, the Gestapo uh, also talked about the movie uh, that goes along with that with uh, Tom Cruise. Anyway, sorry, I digress. The Gestapo suspected Rommel might have been involved in the plot, but although he had uh, been approached, uh, he had refused to participate. But any connection with the uh, bungled assassination was enough for Hitler, who ordered Rommel's death. The only obstacle to quick trial and execution was Rommel's stature as one of Germany's most heroic field marshals. Therefore, two army generals were dispatched to call on him at his home, there to offer him a grim choice, either to commit suicide or to be disgraced in public trial and executed, leaving his family at the mercy of the Gestapo. On this day, the generals arrived at his home uh, in Herlingen near Ulm to save his wife and son. Rommel left with the generals and took poison in the staff car. The public was told he had died of war wounds, and the government arranged a solemn state funeral, which Hitler refused to attend. Uh, Goebbels, Goring, and other top Nazi leaders, all of whom knew that Rommel's had, had in effect, been executed, sent odious notes of condolence to his wife. Hitler, date, Hitler, Hitler's, dated 16 October 1944, read, Accept my sincerest sympathy for the heavy loss uh, you have suffered with the death of your husband. The name of Field Marshal Rommel will forever be linked to with the heroic battles in North Africa. So there is your tales of war for 14th of October. Uh, and what is my game that I compare this to? Well, it's going to be Field Commander Rommel. This is from DVG Games. Uh, I believe this might have been the first in the series of their uh, Field Commander series, which they cover Alexander, they cover Napoleon, uh, uh, Nimitz, and I think they're working as of the date of this publishing. Uh, they have not released yet, but I think they're working on Lee. Um, and their their Field Commander games are, uh, are in my opinion, very enjoyable. They're solitaire games where you are put in the shoes of uh, a famous uh, general or admiral and having to uh, face uh, the same kind of decisions they faced on a series of their uh, battles or campaigns. Uh, in this one, we're covering the, the top uh, ones that we mentioned in just that article right here. We're starting off in France. You're going to be um, uh, taking on uh, uh, being Rommel's uh, ghost division in 1940 France and going through uh, the lowlands in France as, as part of Germany's uh, invasion of Europe or France uh, at that time in 1940. Then next you'll be going into North Africa, 1941. Uh, and this is where Rommel really uh, made his claim to fame here uh, in North Africa. And then you're going to do a th his third and final uh, campaign, which is uh, D-Day, 1944. Uh, and as you can see here, these games are ba basically kind of area control games or, or area movement games where you're going to be moving from area to area and then you're going to be drawing uh, counters representing the Allies' uh, position. They are the AI or the robot in this. You'll be drawing counters to tell how, how they react. You've got your charts and, tr and uh, tables and um, tracks on the board here. Uh, along with your sequence of play, which is very important for a any kind of solitaire game. And as I said, this was the this is the first edition of this. I think they they eventually came out with a, a more uh, 
refined or deluxe edition of this game. I, I assume, I don't have it, so I assume it has mounted maps. All their other leader games that I have, or field commander games, I should say, have mounted maps. But I, I, I imagine they probably didn't change the the actual art on the maps very much. Maybe they, you know, uh, made a little bit larger font on the sequence of play and what have you. Don't know. Don't have it. Um, but the counters are typical, you know, DVG, you know, quality counters. Again, they might have came up with some thicker ones when they came up with the deluxe version. But um, this is an interesting game in that you get a chance to cover three very different uh, campaigns. You get France in 40 and, and 44, so you get to see two sides of France, but they're very much uh, different uh, uh, campaigns and how they're uh, protracted. You also have the, or portrayed, I should say. You also have North Africa, which is really his uh, his sweet spot, uh, but the, in that there's some ebb and flow in there as well. So um, there you have it. That is what I have for you today uh, it, on the 14th of October when uh, Erwin Rommel uh, met his end, uh, kind of at his own hand, but but it was a forced hand. So there you have it. That's what I have for you today on Tales of War and Coffee with Kilroy. Thank you so much for stopping by. Love to know your thoughts on uh, Rommel and his career and his fame and shortcomings. Also, uh, this game, any thoughts on this game would be uh, welcomed as well. Uh, I, again, I like the Phil Commander series. This one I have probably put as number, uh, is probably lower on my list. I, I like the Napoleon. Um, it probably goes Napoleon, um, Alexander, Rommel, and then Nimitz. Uh, I like Nimitz. It's just it's got some wonkiness to it, and then even, and it has an uh, upgrade kit that kind of brings it, fixes some of the issue, but not all the issues. But still a, a, a solid game, but takes a lot more effort. Th this is probably one of the quicker ones to get into and has more of a, a straight-up war game feel. The other ones have a, more of a campaign and a legacy-type feel. Anyway... I went on too long. Thanks, y'all. Take care. Thanks for watching!